Hi, Matt B here and welcome to M2M, the channel that burns the nonsense. And welcome to this new series simply called Moon Hoax, where I debunk the most common moon land hoax theories, both old and new, from the era of Apollo from 1969 to 1972. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon, select all, and you'll be notified when I upload more videos. And if you'd like the video, then please hit the thumbs up. But the best thing for you to do if you comment below in each video, let me know how I'm getting on. And if there's any moon hoax theories that you'd like me to add, then let me know in the comments below and I'll look at adding it. So anyway, let's get on with the video and roll the credits. Number 10. Why didn't we go back to the moon for more than 50 years? I don't really consider this as a conspiracy as such, because I think this is a valid question. But when it isn't a valid question is when it is applied to the moon hoax narrative. Because the conspirators use this as another weapon to support their theories that NASA didn't go in the first place. But when you think about it, it sounds like a bit of a contradiction, I think. But anyway, I digress. The answer to the question, though, is in the reason NASA went to the moon to begin with. On the 4th of October 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first ever artificial satellite into orbit around the Earth. Quite honestly, it wasn't much more than a large metal football with aerials and some electronics that transmitted a constant bleep as it all over the Earth. But for the United States, it wasn't the satellite itself that caused alarm but the means by which the Russians managed to launch it to begin with. It meant the Soviet Union had a technological advantage over the United States, as well as a propaganda boost to a communist way of life during a period of time when East-West relations were getting colder by the month. Known as the Cold War. And so began the Space Race, which prompted the United States Congress to part of what is known as the National Aeronautics and Space Act to allow NASA to be born on July 1958. The next goal for both the Soviet Union and the United States was to put humans into space and the United States pushed hard to do just that before the Soviet Union. After various launch failures and other delays the Soviet Union once again beat the United States to this goal. On April the 12th 1961 the Soviets launched the Vostok 1 spacecraft containing cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin and managed to orbit the Earth in under 90 minutes, becoming the first human into space, as well as the first human to orbit the Earth. Less than a month later, on the May 5th, 1961, the United States replied with the first American into space with Alan Shepard. But once again, this embarrassed the United States, becoming second to the seemingly technological superiority of the Soviet Union. What was to be done? Was the space race over? You could argue that the space race had been won by the Soviet Union, but President Kennedy had other ideas. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. So the challenge was put down. Congress approved it and so began the race to the moon. Cutting a long story short, after the success of Project Mercury, Gemini and their preliminary Apollo missions on the 24th of July 1969, NASA astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But as you can see, the race to space and the race to the moon was very much driven by politics and consequently politicians. We must remember NASA was funded and is still funded by public taxes, and Congress holds the safe keys. The reason why the Apollo program was cut short to Apollo 17 and not the planned Apollo 20 was the political climate and the public opinion. The race to the moon was done. Risks had been taken. Lives had been lost. Was the financial cost and the risk to more lives worth it anymore? Much to the annoyance of the scientists and the astronauts, the answer from the public and the politicians was a resounding no. After that, and the years to the follow, there was no real political will or public support to return to the moon. So there it is, yet another simple explanation that destroys the moon hoax narrative. But of course, 
more fuel for the fire. Thanks for watching.